Um, so Greg, thank you so much again for joining um, us today for the cash flow show. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the Syracuse Pen and what you do? Okay. Basically, yeah. the Syracuse Pen, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a one-man show. It's just me. Mm -hmm. I focus mostly on resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn profiles. Okay. I also do proofreading, ghostwriting, mm -hmm. uh, some blog posts here and there. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's really about the resumes and the, and the cover letters. Great. And um, how did you get started and how has it grown since, since then? I started in 2015 mm -hmm. and basically I just wanted to do something with, with, my, with my writing. I mean, I'm an English teacher. I teach seventh grade. That's my, mm -hmm. my primary job and I love it. But I wanted to do something more. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to be a, a writer. I was a print journalist for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to continue to do something with my writing. Mm -hmm. So I figured I would start a, a freelance business, uh, writing, editing, proofreading, see what was out there, see what the opportunities were. Mm -hmm. So I started on Upwork, just getting you know, individual gigs here and there. I registered, you know, a, a DBA with the county to make it official. Then I got my, my, my website and I just kind of started out looking for proofreading jobs here and there. Resumes are, are not what my intention was when I started out. In fact, when I started my, my, had my first business card, I said my services were proofreading and writing, mm -hmm. blogging and ghostwriting. And I said, resume review. I wasn't planning on doing resumes from, from scratch the way I, I do now, but that's what I kept finding was that people were coming to me for resumes. So that's where I developed my, my niche and my expertise. And I just kept learning more about that and, and developing those skills. And now it's primarily what I do for the business. Right. And that makes perfect sense. So I guess you kind of fell into the resume aspect of it just because there was so much demand for it in the market. Yeah. That's what that's what people needed, you know. Not not everybody is writing mm -hmm. a, a great novel that needs an editor, mm -hmm. um, but everybody at one point or at a couple points in their lives will need a resume. Right. So this is where the need is, and that's what I feel. And what is your vision for like the next three to five years? Do you plan to keep resumes as your mainstay, or do you want to kind of grow and expand from that? For the moment, I think mm -hmm. I'm keeping resumes as my mainstay because the, the demand is high. Mm -hmm. I've not slowed down at all with the pandemic. In fact, I've seen business really pick up in the past year or so. If I were to expand to something else beyond resumes, mm -hmm. I think possibly more proofreading, possibly more, more writing. If, if something comes along, I'm not actively seeking anything right now mm -hmm. beyond resumes. The biggest way I would see the resume business growing would be if I were to hire somebody else to work with me, you know, as a, um, as a, as a freelancer for me, or if I were to develop some sort of um, ebook mm -hmm. or, you know, downloadable materials, I can just create once and, and sell to people that they would get, get value out of. Mm -hmm. Maybe at some point down the line, I'll, I'll do that. That's really the best way to, to scale when it's just me. I still have a full-time job I'm doing on the, on the side. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'd say if I'm looking ahead three to five years, possibly more of what I've been doing and continuing to develop myself here. Awesome. That makes perfect sense. Um, and for hiring freelancers, is um, do you think that'll hit a certain point in terms of the demand of work or how much like is there a is there a benchmark for how much you want to make before you would bring someone on or have you planned any of that or that's just kind of waiting in the wings i have not have not planned any of that okay. um i've actually just started working with a another resume writer mm -hmm. who as as a freelancer for for her mm -hmm. so i'm going to see what it's like on on that end as the as the one doing the freelancing as opposed to the one farming out the the work get a little bit of a, a better idea of how it works from the freelancers end before I decide to take one on myself. Okay. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Um, and just real quick in terms of the, um, in terms of the marketing that you do. And um, I think you had mentioned before that you've done SEO, you've done Upwork and you're doing LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. So, and that you spend a certain amount on um, basically ads as well. 
in the past? How does, does that factor into your pricing at all? Not, not particularly. Okay. Okay. Basically I, I find in general, the more I spend on ads, mm -hmm. the more phone calls I get, the more inquiries I get from, from customers. I don't raise my prices to mm -hmm. cover the cost of the ads. If that's what you're asking. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, I just, I kind of keep my, my prices pretty steady. If, if, if I get a customer who came to me through LinkedIn or through Google or a referral from somebody else, or just, you know, my neighbor who mm -hmm. finds out that your resume is nasty and asked me to, to work for them. Um, I'm not going to change my price based on how much it costs me to get that, that customer. Everyone gets, gets treated the same. But what I will do is look at my, my ad to saying, okay, which, which forms are bringing me the best mm -hmm. revenue, the most reliable customers, the most frequent customers, mm -hmm. and I'll put more in, in that area. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then right. sometimes I'll, I'll turn mm -hmm. off the Google ads altogether right. if I'm finding that you know, business is, is heavy, volume is heavy, mm -hmm. or if at the time when I just need a few days off to do something with my family or go away, or if I'm at a time when work at school is particularly heavy, right. I can turn off the Google ads to bring volume down a little bit mm -hmm. and turn it back on when I'm ready to, to take customers again. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So that way you can kind of um, leverage that system so that you're you're never overworked, basically, or rarely, right. hopefully. Right. Um, I, I wouldn't say never. I wouldn't say never, but I can control when I'm overworked. Right. Um, so how do you juggle kind of the full time job and the 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 resume writing and editing? Well, um, mm -hmm. I've been teaching for I'm going to be going to my thirteenth year mm -hmm. in in September. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I've developed my, a, a great archive of lesson plans. I have a great teammate who I've worked with, another seventh grade English teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and we develop plans together. So we have a lot to, to draw on from, from old material that does need to be updated, mm -hmm. but it's not like we're starting from scratch. Right. I definitely could not do this if mm -hmm. it was my first, second, third, or four, even fourth year of teaching, because that's when you really learn to teach, you learn your lessons, you learn what works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically all my time at, at school mm -hmm. is really dedicated to getting my planning done, getting my, my grading done, doing mm -hmm. the communication with parents, doing all my, my school related responsibilities at school. So when I get home, I have the most time to devote to either the business or, or to my family, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, which, which isn't to say that I don't, I don't sometimes have to bring schoolwork home. Right. Um, if there's a major project due or there's a major new unit plan that we're trying to plan, then I'll, like I said, turn off the Google ads, maybe tell customers who, who call, say, you know, I, I'd love to help you out, but just let you know, it'll be a week or so before I can get started. Mm -hmm. You know, be up from customer if there's a, a longer time frame than usual. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I'm caught up on school, mm -hmm. then I turn the business back on. Right. Because the school, that, that's my bread and butter. You know, that's what, that's what you know, pays the mortgage, that's what keeps, you know, the, the health benefits and I, and I really, really enjoy it. So that, that has to take priority. Mm -hmm. um, but when, but I, I plan it in such a way mm -hmm. that I make the most use of my school time for school. So I have most time at mm -hmm. home for the business. Uh, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, that you, and it's great that you have the time, at least most of the time at school that you can kind of um, juggle that because it is a lot doing two jobs. Um, it is. It is. Um, so I was going to ask uh, next, kind of going back to the, the cash flow aspect of your business. Um, what kind of, I guess, revenue model do you use or how do you price, I guess, more on pricing? How do you price your um, services? Is it by word or is it like an overall project pricing or um, do you have like special bundles for people who maybe need several different things? How does yeah. that? Yeah, I have, I have a basic price that, mm -hmm. that I I ask for for probably 90% of the resumes. What will happen is when I have a client who, who, who is interested, mm -hmm. I'll talk to them for maybe 10, 15 minutes, find out what they need, where mm -hmm. they're starting, you know, what their particular goals are. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's something particularly complicated or something that's gonna sound a little, you know, very time intensive, then I might raise the price a little bit mm -hmm. uh, just to, because that's, what it's gonna gonna take to get the job done and to do it right. If it sounds like it's something simple, 
Mm -hmm. uh, they just need like a quick review, then maybe I can I can lower the price depending on the situation. But for the most part, it's just based on the project. And however long it takes me to do it, that's how long it takes me to do it. And I tell my clients, you know, most resumes are done within three or four drafts, but it if it takes me more than that, it takes me more than that, you know, and that's what I, what I agreed to do. And if I'm finding that it's taking too long and over and over, then maybe I'll change my prices accordingly. Right. And um, can you take me through that process a little bit? Because I know like each resume would obviously be very, very customized because we're talking about individual people. How do right. you kind of come up with the, the pricing for how difficult a resume is going to be to, to put together? Usually clients come to me, they already have a resume. Okay, it's an older one. Uh, it needs to be updated with new information. Mm -hmm. It needs to be reformatted to, to comply with, you know, what employers are looking for now, what the ATS system is mm -hmm. looking for, the applicant tracking system that, the computer that looks at a resume before a human being ever ever gets to it. Some of my clients, you know, they haven't done a resume in, in 20 years, so this is something kind of new to them, and I guide them through it. And usually that's all included. Usually that, that's just what I expect when I go into a resume. What's going to make it more, uh, more expensive is if I look at it and it's, for example, a CV which is a lot longer and more involved than a resume. Uh, I do those well, but I do usually ask a little more for that because it does take more of my time. Um, if someone wants a, a cover letter as well, I'll definitely do cover letters and there's a, there's a package that I do with that. If, there's, if they want a LinkedIn profile done, that'll work into the package as well. So I do have package deals based on how many things the, the client needs. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's great um, so that you have those different models for each use case already set up. Um, and how do you kind of track all that? Do you have like a program that you use or an Excel sheet or? Just just an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. I have an Excel spreadsheet that, that I keep track of, you know, the client, what their service is, um, the dates, you know, when they paid and, you know, where I am in the process. Am I, am, do I need to schedule a phone call with them? Did I send them their their first draft and waiting to hear back. Mm -hmm. Do I need to address, um, you know, changes that they want to see made from the from the first draft? Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing more complicated than that. And it's easy because it's just me. Right. You know, if I had if I had a a freelancer working working for me, then it might get more complicated. Mm -hmm. But one thing I like about my model is it is just me, so mm -hmm. it is easy for me to keep track of these things. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and. Um... Speaking of, um, I guess, the low overhead, um, are there any other expenses that you typically use that are kind of unique to your business? I don't think so. Just, um, you know, different, different kinds of advertising, um, membership in the Better Business Bureau, the National Resume Writers Association, things that fall under the category of, of marketing. And I have my, my laptop. Earlier this month, I splurged on a, a monitor extender. So I have two extra monitors on both sides of the laptop now, which just makes life so much easier for me, where I have the client's original resume over here. I have the email from them or my notes from our conversation here. And then in the middle, I have the resume itself. Uh, just makes life happier. Oh, definitely. Um, I can imagine that being super useful as a writer myself. Um, yeah. I mean, I discovered but as, that- as overhead goes, just- just the little technology here and there when I need to replace the, the computer. Oh yeah, that's every, that's every great. couple of years. But it's it's yeah. the same computer I use as my personal mm -hmm. computer for everything else. Right. So it has multiple uses. So it's good lifetime value as well. Yeah. 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 Um, so when you're going through your cash flow statements, how granular are you um, when it comes to reporting? Um, like expenses and like how how far deep do you get in terms of the reporting and the projections? Um, I, as far as reporting what I'm spending and what I'm bringing in, mm -hmm. I report it down to the penny. Okay. I keep track of all my expenses, all my revenue, all the fees that I pay to, uh, mm -hmm. to PayPal or, or to the credit card companies for the, for the transactions. Mm -hmm. As far as projections go, I don't really make strong projections. 
I, I look at what I've been doing and I say, okay, last year, August was, was pretty good for me. I probably expect August to be a good year, uh, a good month this year as well. Um, it's hard to project because the business is still growing mm -hmm. and it's grown every year since I, since I started. And every time I've made a projection, I've always gone, gone well past it. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I were to make a projection, I usually find that I'm projecting a little too conservatively and I'm happy with, in, in the end when I'm surprised that I've gone past my projection but I'm not using any, any science or, or, or data to project it. I just kind of look at my chart and say, you know what, if I can make X amount by, by the end of the year, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of advice would you give to someone who might be struggling with like the financial aspect of the business? I'd say, look at your overhead. Uh, I've been fortunate that I've been able to, to do this with very little overhead. It's just the nature of my business. I don't have any special equipment to buy or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also say, look at your, your fees that you might be able to, to cut somewhere. Mm -hmm. For example, I used to always send clients a PayPal invoice. Mm -hmm. And then every time I got a PayPal invoice, PayPal would take their, their cut for the transaction fee. Mm -hmm. And then since then, I've basically said to clients, look, you can pay me using this, 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 or this. Mm -hmm. And usually they're choosing one of the options that does not involve a transaction fee. Sure. So, so that, that, that's one way I've, I've cut expenses. Mm -hmm. I'd say also keep track of everything for, uh, for tax deduction mm -hmm. expenses, uh, get a good, um, a good accountant. I have a, an accountant who does my, my family's, you know, personal income taxes, mm -hmm. as well as the, the business, because when you are a sole proprietorship, you know, depending on, on the structure, and I'm not a tax expert, but for me, uh, mm -hmm. I can, you know, put it all together under, under one. And it just does make the finances easier when you have an, an accountant who can look at it and say, well, you can do this for your business. You can do this for your business. You can shift mm -hmm. this over, over here. Mm -hmm. And that's a good investment worth, worth making. Oh, 100%. I think any kind of specialist that comes in and can help you, you know, set everything straight so you don't have to stress over it is a huge help. Anything you can do to get free publicity is, okay. is always good. You're not spending money on, on advertising as much. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, I'll ask clients, you know, when I'm, when I'm closing up after I send them the, the final resume and say, please keep me in mind. If you know anybody who, who, you know, would find my, my, services valuable. I ask people to put recommendations for me on LinkedIn or on my Better Business Bureau profile. And if they're if they're happy with your with your service, they'll they'll do it. And I think people trust that a lot more than they trust advertising. Oh definitely word of mouth is huge in that um, testimonial kind of visual um, especially like online if they leave it um, on LinkedIn or on Google business or something like um, you know with the stars or any kind of um, uh, just being able to read it and like kind of see it set in stone as well. I guess online just makes it so much uh, more authentic, almost. On, on, online and in, in different in different formats. Because I have on my website, I have a little section of, mm -hmm. of um, you no know, testimonials from clients. But the fact is, I control that website, and there, there's nothing that that the average viewer can or, or, or reader can look at it and, and know that these are authentic people, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the other sites, the Better Business Bureau, the LinkedIn, the, uh, you know, the, the Google, it is a little more, a little harder for somebody to kind of finagle those. They're a lot more genuine. They're a lot more trusted, I think. Well, definitely, um, 100%. Um, LinkedIn, I have found for myself and for um, other people that I've worked with has been extremely um, lucrative um, in terms of finding clients and it's just a great way to get inspiration from other professionals. So that's kind of like the hub, I think, right now. <laughs> for, uh, I think most, of clients, most of my clients now come from LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Greg, um, for all these awesome um, answers and for sharing a little bit with us about your business. Um, Thank you for having me today.